What a big, big performance from Joel Embiid to save Andrew Underberger from the online haters as the Sixers were, or not the Sixers, rather, the mm. United States team was in danger The of, Sixers are America's team. Yes. The, and the, in that they're fucked up all the time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the United States on the verge of being in a situation in which they might not even medal and lose to Serbia on the backs of one Joel Embiid. Mm -hmm. The guy's fucking got one functional knee, had to throw everyone on his back, and just own Nikola Jokic in the final quarter and lead Team USA to victory. It's actually interesting in that it was Embiid and Steph Curry. Steph Curry had struggled pretty much in the Olympics. It's amazing. People were pretty quiet about that one, but uh, I guess when you win several championships, it's not as so much of a big deal. Well, but... That Good on Embiid, looking like Embiid, as the 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 world understands the Embiid experience and that he has to ease into the season. That's how it is, man. Doesn't yep. matter what the platform is. Doesn't matter the stage. Our guy is going to ease in one one toe at a time. He's not jumping right in the pool. That's no. crazy. He's going to no. ease into it. Yes. Um, no, it was awesome to see him hit shots in, in crunch time. It was awesome to watch him like set screens for Steph to get him open. That's cool as hell. We should I mean, get him. Steph and LeBron being as good as they are still, it's just awesome. I mean, it's cool. It's really like it. It's it is Avengers type stuff. It 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 like excites the like you know seven year old boy inside me. Like all the all the action. I have like seven year old boy voice. Like all the action figures or guys are you're crushing and LeBron does this stuff and then yeah. like it just feels like so. How how is this happening? It feels like you're watching you're watching superheroes do it that do what they do. And the fact that Joel is one of them is sick. I love the little pump and go into a dunk on the baseline. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not going to let an MB dunk go by before I comment on it. He had a couple dunks tonight mm -hmm. or whenever time it is or was. Got fouled uh, on on one of them. Should have been. Uh, fell down. You love a, yep. love a fall down. Yep. Uh, he's having a good time, dude. He's having a good time. He's getting booed. He's fucking taking it on. He's telling everyone to suck it. He got Snoop Dogg and Asia Wilson in that picture to, to suck it and to enjoy uh, being told to suck it it's just he's just a singular dude and it's fun to watch other people root for him that normally don't but also feel the occasional frustration with the Embiid experience mm -hmm. such as a lack of rebounding from time to time wish he would just go up and grab that shit um, there's still there's definitely still some of that uh, and that will as Daryl said on the pod be there Achilles heel is rebounding but you know He's not he's not the perfect player, but I'd say he's a perfect human, and I love and I love seeing him happy. So I was I was happy for today. Did you see after the game him uh, waving at the crowd and, yep. and and then crotch chopping them as the the DX chop, chop, crotch chop has gone international and oh, yeah. he's like NBA, you cannot find me for this. <laughs> ha ha ha! I will do this and it will be free. It won't cost fifty thousand dollars. Eat my ass, eat my ass, eat my ass. So it's very funny to see as well. He's just he's just a singular singular type of guy, and it's I mean I hope that the playing with those kinds of players like there was even one play where he just he caught the ball in the swing and then just immediately went into a dribble handoff with Durant and you can easily see that working with Paul George and you can easily see him screening to get either PG or Maxi open more often like I think the beginning of last season had a lot of movement had a lot of Embiid passing and it felt like oh this is special this is very non-doc this is the Nick Nurse offense that we've that we were hoping for that I didn't really believe would happen. And then I think over the course of the year, obviously Joel gets hurt, but even, even before he got hurt, it sort of felt like that was maybe a little bit going away, at least to, to my memory. It felt like it was sort of re reverting back to like, all right, everybody just get in their comfort zones and stuff. But I would love to see them be playing at a very high level. And then when he, and then the playoffs happened, it was just, you know, he's just trying to survive as much as he could out there with, with the bad knee. So I, I would, I would love to see like a, beginning to end consistent commitment on team wide of like not getting stuck in the mud, moving the ball and beat screening, catching on the move. Maxi catch, obviously Maxi's going to run around like crazy, but like it, it's exciting to watch him be play in this and, and imagine what could be with, uh, with the, the, you know, two of the best teammates ever had at the same time. Yeah, it is. And you know, I, somebody left a voicemail. I don't know if we ever got it, but, and I think we talked about it last time, but just 
his experience, as you said, like with other players who can make shots and, and, you know, thinking about, we, we didn't play the shoot. I should have grabbed it. There's, you know, a clip on, on Charles Barkley was on podcast P talking about Embiid, you know, uh, sort of playing embarrassingly in the Olympics up until that point and his, you know, coming into camp out of shape every year. And, uh, but also when he did the Olympic thing, because, you know, Charles was out of shape all the time when he early in his career, when he would show up, but when he did the Olympic thing and he realized, and he likened that to when he went to Phoenix and he was like, Hey, I don't have to score 30 points anymore, but I do have that energy that I use to score 30 points. Oh, I can use that on other things. So I can become a better rebounder. I can play more defense, all of those sorts of things. And just getting this experience with guys where hopefully, you know, hopefully some of this translates, you know, hopefully some of this is helpful for him as he, as he comes back. Uh, another really neat, uh, Olympic thing. Now we've mentioned that there is a Ricky guy with a gold medal. Nick Mead, rower, has a gold medal, but even bigger, Mike. Yeah. The two people this chosen is cool. this is to, cool. to be U.S. flag bearers for the Paris closing ceremony are Katie Ledecky, who obviously, like, huge. Someone, yeah. One of the most decorated Olympians of all time. And the most decorated Olympian of all time, <laughs> of Nick Mead. <laughs> yeah, when he comes Nick, back, we got to get him on. It's enough Nick already. Mead. You get to win a medal. You get to do this. You come on the podcast. We'll ask you what rowing is. Nick Mead. We'll I actually him. think uh, uh, the Danny told me he did an interview with him that a post that's going live uh, soon. So we'll have something on the website. Not a not a pod, but we need Nick Mead on the pod. Absolutely. How there's two people that are going to do this, and one is the fucking Ricky guy. Well, we don't know the Katie the deck. He's not a Ricky guy. It's, it's an absolutely fair point. We don't know that Katie Ledecky isn't a Ricky guy. 